I want everyone to say with me, renew your mind. I will allow God to renew my mind. Okay, so we're going to talk about the renewing of your mind. Guess what? I'm I'm just going to tell you guys something that's so amazing. You want to know what salvation really is? Allowing God to renew your mind. Right? Because our old mind will be attached to our old self, nature, or flesh. Our new mind should be what? you got to work with me. I don't have time today. Your new mind needs to be what? The mind of Christ. Right? So if we have the mind of Christ, it ties directly into what Shirley said when she's like, hey, you know what? You're the only image of God the world's going to see because you actually have him living inside of you. His mind is your mind, so hence, what you do will be what he would do, right? So I've made the statement before, and it gets people feisty, but when you think about this, if we were to live spirit-led every single day and have the mind of Christ in us every single day, we would live perfect lives. Why? Because we'd have the mind of Christ, Our old nature would truly be crucified. And so when you renew your mind, it leads you to a personal reviving encounter with God. When you renew your mind, it allows you to open up not only your mind but your heart to God for transformation. When you renew your mind, you will not be the same. You will take on your identity in Christ at that point, which will revive your heart and fulfill your destiny. Renew your mind. So today, as we talk about this, you guys need to realize that if we're talking about salvation in Christ, it isn't a prayer you pray or a church you attend. 15 minutes. Give me 15 minutes and I'll give you something that'll get you, okay? Salvation is not a prayer you pray or a church you attend. It's a renewing of your mind through Christ Jesus. And I think that this has been so skewed by the church, right? Because the church sits there and says, hey, let me put another mark on the board. I got another one. Wait a second. If salvation isn't a prayer you pray or a church you attend or even, you ready for it? A decision... hear me? It's an action. Decisions without actions are not renewing of mind. Whenever you sit there and say, God, I'm going to give you the ability to renew who I am, that's an instantaneous and progressive thing that will happen. Amen? And so in this place, I want we're going to dive through some scripture, Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. The heading in Scripture here says, living as children of light. And so it says in 17, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Now let's just, let's break that into something we can all understand. You must no longer live like you used to. Throw Gentiles out and put used to in there. Don't live like you used to, right? In the futility of your thinking. In verse 18, it goes on to talk about what the Gentiles did. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Let's talk about that for a second. Can I tell you right now, I think that the worst thing that ever happened to people is church. Because you get just enough to feel safe. But you actually don't know what relationship with Christ looks like. Oh, I know all the right things to say. I have all the spiritual one-liners. I'll pray for a hedge of protection, right? I'm washed in the blood. But did you renew your mind? So here, we need to make sure that we understand something very clearly. 
that we cannot live what our old life used to look like. We cannot have the ignorance in us due to the hardening of our hearts. 19, having lost all sensitivity, they've given themselves over to sensuality, to indulgence, and every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. Now, I'll be honest with you. If you look at the world around us today, we are trapped, right? I mean, we, we live in a world where I had someone the other day get absolutely off their rocker furious because it took way too long for them to get their food and still have soggy fries. Oh, we say, oh, my, but what? Don't give me soggy fries. If I'm going to be unhealthy, I want it to be good and unhealthy. Right? Right? But we live in this world where we just want more, we want more, we want more. We have this world where, you know what, let's, let's raise the bar of immorality because it's not fun enough or it's not crazy enough or it's not bent enough. We live in this world, and so, you know, it's interesting. This was written 2,000-some-odd years ago, but it pertains to today. But verse 20, you, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus 22. You were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self. Everyone say, put off off. my old self. Which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. 23, to be made new in the attitude of your mind. Wow. Wow. To be made new in the attitude of your mind. It's renewing your mind. Okay. Twenty four, and put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So that's what we're called to do. We're called to take off old and put on new. It's a process, a decision. So a lot of times it's this, we, we have a really good service like today, and we're like, okay, everyone here is emotionally charged, now I'm going to give this really compelling salvation message and try get you to say a prayer so that we can put it on our ACMR report that we had this many conversions in a year. And I hate it because it doesn't work. God's not calling you to just go say a prayer, he's saying, hey, guess what? I've got a new opportunity for you, but you're going to have to let me renew your mind. You're going to have to turn over the steering wheel of your life, the reins of your life, and say, hey, you know what? Who I am in me isn't enough. I need God, and I need new thought process. Dan, what you said, I loved what you said, that you know what, God's about, he, you're, in the, you're in the middle of the water, guys. He's taking you out the other side. Can I tell you that I believe that is true? I believe that they've overplayed a hand. I believe that God's exposing. I believe that God's raising up his church. I believe a lot of good things are happening. Now, can I tell you something? I absolutely don't want normal life back. Because you want to know what normal life look like? Lukewarm, complacent, comfortable, (laughs) bricks and straw. But there were leeks. And there was garlic. Anyone who does not know about, (laughs) everyone's like, go back and read the story whenever they were uh, in the wilderness. This is the thing. God's doing something right now, but don't let yourself get comfortable again. We don't have time, you guys. Time is way too short to be comfortable. The best part is this. For the first time ever, I've seen godly men and women, and I've seen patriots stand up and say, I'm not going to sit idly by and be content. I'm not going to just let my world go down around me. I'm not going to let my family not know Christ. I'm not going to let the kids next door not know Christ. I'm not going to let my coworkers not know Christ. You know what? I'm not going to let my government go down. You know what? I'm not going to let it. So let's not lose that. Why? Why is this so important? Because it all goes back to the renewing of our minds. Because if you have a heart like God has a heart, then all of a sudden you're going to be fully engaged. Do you think God is like... <laughs> no, 
not today. I don't have time. I'm tired. I'm bored. No. God is actively engaged in chasing after you. So I'm going to read it one more time. Just 24. We are called to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. That's you. Oh, well, I have a past. Don't care. Oh, well, I have a problem. Don't care. God, there's no, God didn't say, he just said, set aside your old, leave it behind, and pick up your new, and then let's do something together. Because if we can do that, life changes. Your born-again experience Or maybe for you, you haven't even had that experience yet. But your born-again experience is not just to save you from hell. It's to give you the mind of Christ while here on earth. Because this is the problem. If all it was was to save you from hell, then there'd be no purpose of living after you got saved. It would literally be, oh, I'm now saved. There's no reason for me to be on this earth. I can now check out. That's not the case. Our born-again experience didn't just save your soul from hell by providing freedom from a life of sin and demonic oppression. It also provided a new mind for each one of us. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, but we have the mind of Christ. This mind is filled with peace and joy. It leads to life and destiny. Its ways, thoughts, and intentions are always going to be aligned with heaven. So when you see the world, you see it through a God lens. When you see hurt people, you see it through a God lens. I told the kids here, you know what? God's opening eyes where you're going to see hurt people like you've never seen hurt people before. That's the heart of a father, the heart of a pastor, is to see people and say, you know what? I don't see them as they are. I see them as they're called to be. So when we get a new mind, we're called to be an ambassador. So today we have a very twisted view of ambassadors. Our ambassadors are to show the world a picture of the homeland. So the ambassador to America in a foreign country, all the ambassador has is the ability to show a picture of. But in Bible times, you know who an ambassador would have been? A son or a daughter of the person they were representing. Maybe a very, very close family friend. But most of the times, it would be a family member. Why? Because the ambassador has authority. Let me say it again, because if if you miss this, you miss it. An ambassador has authority. So when, when we become new creations in Christ Jesus, and we become joint heirs with Christ on this earth, meaning you are now a sibling of Christ... Scripture says that if, you're, if you have not been f- following us for long and you're, you're lost, I'll, I'll catch you up. Not now, though. But if we are joint heirs with Christ and we now have the mind of Christ, that means that you have the authority of God. You are not God. I want everyone to say this. I am not God. I will never be God. Okay, thank you. But I want you to say this, I have the authority of God. See the difference? You want to know what would happen if an ambassador started calling themselves king? You're not an ambassador anymore. You're an ambassador on the bench. You're not on the field of play. So this is the thing that you need to be very careful of, and this is the problem. Human nature loves authority, right? And it then becomes arrogance. You are not, your authority is based on Christ in you and Christ on you, the Holy Spirit working through you. You are just the conduit or vessel for, amen? Okay, make sure you remember that. So when we sit here and we think about the fact that our thoughts, intentions are then aligned with heaven, we then can bring the heart of the Father to his people. And that's what he's looking for. He wouldn't have sent his son to die on the cross to give you abundant life if he didn't want to use you as his ambassadors, as his handiwork for a world around you. 
So what am I doing here? I'm preaching a salvation message, you guys. But it isn't say the prayer so you don't have to go to hell. No, join the team so you can start living heaven on earth. Be a part of what God has for you. Do we have to repent? Yes. Do we have to turn from our old ways? Yes. Because we don't get new minds unless we set aside the old mind. Then this is the other thing. I believe that the the concept of burning the ships is a great concept because what we do is this. I want the new mind, but can I still go out Friday night and live like I used to? Well, let me ask this question. Ask your new mind. Probably you'll get your answer. Because when we have that new mind, it changes everything. The Apostle Paul made a very clear distinction between two different minds. One being the spiritual mind, the second the fleshly mind. Uh, Romans 5, 8. Or Romans 8, 5 through 7 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For, set, uh, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. How many people here want peace? we got a couple people who are either sleeping or lying. Um, every one of us want peace, right? We want a peace that surpasses all understanding. We want something that's the waves are rocking the boat, and we don't want to be rocking with it. We want some peace. So how do we get peace? Set our mind on the spirit, which is life and peace. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. You'll have to serve your ice cream fast. Okay. We're going there. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Let's go there. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Is this making sense so far? Okay. Renew your mind. And the reason this is so incredibly important is this. We have lost sight of what salvation is, and we've boiled it back to a very rudimentary thought that it is you saying a prayer and making a decision, and then hopefully coming to church after that. Most people want you to be saved so their church numbers rise. Most people want you saved so your church numbers rise. Can I tell you right now, that is the dumbest thing ever? Because at that point, it isn't about you. It's all about what? The church numbers. It's all about status. It's all about how I could say this or that or break this or break that. You guys, it's all about disciples and renewed minds. Okay, 12 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of what? Worship. And then it says this, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Wait a second. We want to know God's will, right? How do we get God's will? We pray a lot and we fast. We read the word of God. Sure. But you want to know what it really is? You take off the human glasses and you put on the God glasses and renew your mind. You get a completely different view on life. And all of a sudden, I'm just going to tell you, at least in my life, God goes, my will for your life and purpose for your life is way less of a a laser focus and way more of a broad spectrum. Where God says, hey, you know what? My goal is for you to go here. And you know what? You do you on the process. You do you on the way. Because I created you. I fearfully and wonderfully made you. I put your passions inside of you. Now go have fun figuring out all the cool things you can do while you go for that goal. What? You, do, you mean I don't have to, I don't have to s- turn around and, and live miserable and, and think I'm doing something great for God by living miserable? Well, if you can't handle money and it's your God, yeah, probably. 
But why have we turned that into everyone? Sorry, that's a whole other sermon. I'll just be quiet. Okay. (laughs) Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your mind. The only one that can renew your mind is whom? God and you. Because this is the thing. God is not going to renew your mind if you don't ask him to. It takes you going, God, I need a new heart and a new mind. I need to see like you see, think like you think, and do like you do. And I need to have your heart and your mind for lost people. And that's when things start changing. You're going to be a different husband, a different wife. You'll be a different child. You're going to be a different coworker, a different boss. Because when you renew your mind, all of a sudden, you see people through God's eyes instead of through your eyes. You don't just get mad at the employee when they do something stupid. You see all the backstory of why they did something stupid. And you start loving them through the process. It's impossible to say we have a spiritual mind and continue to live after a fleshly mind. Let me say it again. It's impossible to say we have a spiritual mind, yet continue to live after a fleshly mind. It's clear that there needs to be a difference, you guys. There should be a difference. The world should tell there's a difference. You should truly be a before and after. That's before Christ. This is after Christ. When we experience God's power in our lives, His saving power, we then can experience a renewed mind. And finally, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Let's jump there and I will wrap up. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Okay, so this is what you have to realize. When we renew our mind, that doesn't mean the enemy wants us to have a renewed mind. Right? We, we fight a battle. It's raging in our lives. And so if we have a renewed mind and we are walking out a renewed life in Christ, we then need to be careful of this. When the enemy comes against us and says, hey, but I know what you used to do. Hey, you know what? I'm sure you still want to look at this. Hey, you know what? It didn't really change you. And we start to take and have those bombardments. I want to show you something. For though we live in a world, we do not wage war against as the world does. Verse 4, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary... They have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought. To make it obedient to who? To me? To Christ. Wait a second. So we have the ability to do something here. We demolish. Everyone say demolish. Every guy in the room's like, oh, yeah. Right? Demolish. We get to demolish strongholds. Wait a second. What are strongholds? I think divorce is a stronghold. I think alcoholism is a stronghold. I think cancer is a stronghold. Abortion is a stronghold. Right? Poverty is a stronghold. Identity is a stronghold. Poor identity, right? Fatherlessness is a stronghold. Come on, right? So we have the ability to demolish every stronghold. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That's who God's called us to be. So I'm going to tell you right now that when we have a new mind, a renewed mind, walk with me real quick. I know we're out of time. But a renewed mind says this, I don't need Romans Road because I have the Holy Spirit. I know I just shot your sacred cow. And let me walk you through why I said that. Is there anything wrong with Romans Road? 
No. But what happens when God says, hey, you know what? I'm going to customize a plan for them. I'm going to meet them right where they're at. And I'm going to move forward. We don't need the Romans road when we have the Holy Spirit. Now, does that where God wants to start us? Sure. Can he deviate? Yes. Renewed minds. When we have the mind of Christ, everything changes. So today I want to ask this simple question. How many people here need to renew their mind? I'll raise a hand. I think everyone here needs to renew our mind in some way. So this is what I want. We're not going to do, we've already done plenty of time up front. Um, We're not going to do that. And this is the interesting part you need to realize. God doesn't need you to be up front here to bless your socks off. So this is what I want you to do. Just close your eyes, and I want you to repeat after me. You ready for it? Okay, God, you are glorified in this place. And in this moment, I ask for a renewed mind. I will release my old mind and take on your mind. Amen. Okay, so this is how it works. How many people here have ever gone exercising before? Ever gone to a gym or exercised on one thing? Okay. Um, How many people know that if you want to walk in there and bench, you don't put 645s on the bar? You'll then be at the doctor getting a new sternum. That's if you're strong enough to get it off off the rack, right? The point is... You know, the best thing was this. The first day I ever worked out, I was a pretty strapping young man, and the guy that I worked out with wouldn't let me wor- work out with anything but the bar. I was so mad at him. I'm like, I look like a wimp. And he says, you, you pumped that bar out until you can't lift it anymore. And he says, because I just want to build some muscles. Okay, renewed mind requires us to do something. It requires us to wake up tomorrow morning and get into the Word and get the heart of God and renew the mind. It's, it's instantaneous, and it's progressive. Right? I can do that better on this hand. Instantaneous and progressive. So the progressive is when we're praying, when we're fasting, when we're reading, when we're getting into the Word, when we're allowing ourselves to take on that mind of Christ. Now, this is the other thing. You can just as easily decide to take up your old mindset again. Don't do it. Renew the mind. If you're here for the first time ever, and you're like, you know what? I have never accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. The secondary part of that is this. It's the same concept, renew my mind. But it's also this, God, I give you my life. I give you everything. Take the old, take the junk out. Renew the mind, and let's do life together. You're in. You're a part of the family. You're a part of the community. You're a part of the kingdom. And God wants to use you to change the world. You don't get saved just so you don't go to hell, you guys. You don't get saved just to go to heaven. You get saved so you can start leading Christ and the heaven that he has brought to this earth every single day and every single way. Amen? God, I thank you for every person here. God, I pray for the people that maybe for the first time ever says, you know what? Uh, I, I need God in my life. I've been faking it. Or maybe I've been sincerely trying, but I never handed over to God my life. Can I just tell you guys, it doesn't matter how many prayers you pray until you give control over to God. You're not, you're not saved. You're not leading a life that's, that is uh, directed by God. And you know what? I'm sick and tired of watching people hurt, be broken, and struggle because they have not actually turn their life over to God. His ways are better than our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. And so, God, I just pray right now that you'd start impressing upon people in this place that have truly just tried to do it in their own ways, tried to do it in their own power, tried to do it in their own uh, ambitions, and have failed. God, just hand it over to them. Just have them hand it over to you right now, God. We don't have to do it alone, guys. And I'm going to tell you right now, in's way better than out. And a part's way better than not. So, God, we just release 
your will in this place on people's lives. And God, this morning has just been orchestrated by you, so let it finish being orchestrated by you. God, in the, across this room, let people just make that decision. It isn't something they have to do with massive amounts of tears. It isn't something they have to do with a poetic prayer. It's not something they have to do with, with, uh, with sackcloth and ashes. It's simply us saying, God, we're in, and we want something so much more. So, God, we just pray right now that you would, uh, you would just start working in lives and bringing about those changes. For everyone, God, in this place, let us renew our minds. Let us have the mind of Christ. Let us walk it out through the Spirit and change the world because of it. God, let us never get comfortable again. God, I just pray that we as the church would never get comfortable again. Let us live on the edge of our seat, passionately pursuing a change in people's lives. We just thank you and praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay.